Hi, everyone. It's John. It's uh, August 12th, 2022. Thanks for joining me today for a general market update. As a reminder, the presentation is by Rain King LLC, and I am an amateur individual growth stock investor, and I'm not associated with IBD or MarketSmith. So the agenda today, I thought we'd go over some of the market internals to see what's happened over the past two weeks. We'll look at the current market and some leadership. We'll explore the Eureka thrust and the power trend and um, some thoughts on what to do right now. I always start with a real quick review of the big picture. Um, monthly view of the NASDAQ, um, even though we're in a bear market, um, we had always anticipated, I've been saying for at least seven, eight months that we could come down to the 10 to 11,000 area in the NASDAQ. And if it would hold, then we would still be in what I call a super cycle, a uh, bull market super cycle. So things are still, um, we've gotten some support and we're having a decent rally off the lows, which was at 10,565. So let's look at some of the market internals. Two weeks ago, I showed you the advanced decline line on the New York Stock Exchange. And I pointed out that um, the advanced decline line was just shy of the June highs. And that if we had gotten through this point, it would be very, very positive because it would show the advanced decline line clearing um, this level before the actual index did. So here we are with the chart to, on August 11th. And you'll notice that the advanced decline line is even stronger and it's leading um, the index. So the advanced decline line has really moved up strongly into the 200 day moving average, while the S&P is just just this week cleared its June highs. So the, the breadth is strong in the market and it's stronger than the S&Ps on um, the New York. This is the NASDAQ advanced decline line and it's actually the advanced decline volume line. So we're looking at the volume in the advancing issues and the volume in the declining issues. So what's important is um, look at over the last couple of weeks, the advanced decline volume line is really, really strongly moving higher. Um, so high that we've you know, eclipsed the, uh, the late March highs by a long shot. And you'll notice that the NASDAQ index is still even below the March highs. So it's showing us that there seems to be some, some good volume and uh, breadth underneath us is uh, pretty strong and coming on stronger in the NASDAQ. This is the NASDAQ net new highs and new lows. Watch this carefully. And pretty simple message. You can see that we're starting to see NASDAQ net new highs. And we haven't seen this almost the entire year. So it's really positive as the index moving up, we're starting to see um, new highs in some of the names in the NASDAQ um, on a net basis. And it also confirms that you know stocks um, are not breaking down further. So let's get into the current market. I tweeted this out, um, I believe it was yesterday or the day before. This is actually the NASDAQ uh, on a daily chart. And I'm just trying to show a couple different things. One, here's the follow through day that we had on June 24th, day six follow through day. Um, and what we, it got off to a, a fairly uh, choppy start. We actually undercut the follow through day, rallied again, came back. It was a slow start. Um, but since then, um, you'll notice that we've had some powerful days and we like to see some some subsequent follow through days. So you'll see a 3.1% gain on the on the NASDAQ here, 1.6, 4.06, 2.6 and 2.9 um, just the other day. So that's very, very positive. We always see um, this type of action with subsequent follow through days when the market turns. So that's positive. We also, um, I flagged a couple of Eureka thrusts. We've had two of them and I'll share more detail exactly what this is. Um, and we're also gonna talk about the power trend. The power trend turned on, um, I believe it was Wednesday. Um, the other thing I show on um, this chart are some of the leaders that are breaking out. So you'll notice that, you know, a cluster of the solar stocks broke out two weeks ago. Um, positive uh, group action. You'll notice that there's a scattering of some biotechs. There are medical stocks, Lantheus, Shockwave, 
Shockwave had a really good earnings reaction on Monday. Um, this is Paylocity, which had a very strong earnings reaction. But overall, we're not seeing that many growth stocks breaking out yet. Um, the damage was so deep um, from January to June that it takes more time for these stocks to repair themselves. And so we're not seeing as many as we'd like to see, but there are some that are starting um, slowly to, to emerge. So at least that's a positive. I wanted to share some leading sectors. So I wanna correlate the follow through day that we had on June 24th, I've marked it here, and look at the sectors that are, are really have showing some real relative strength um, over the past four to six weeks. XOK is technology. That's a sector that usually is uh, very strong um, when CanSlim is working. Um, the Magenta shows the XBD. This is the broker dealers. And what's really impressive about this is the broker dealers are typically strong in bull markets. So to see this sector starting to show strength is a really, really positive sign looking, um, looking forward. Consumer discretionary is doing well. And probably the most interesting one on the chart is the builders, HXB. Um, the builders are a very interest rate sensitive um, sector. And with the Fed hiking rates aggressively, this seems a little bit confusing. Could you say, why are the builders um, rallying um, in a hiking mode for the Fed? Well, the market's looking ahead six to nine months. And is it possible? that the home builders are signaling that we're anticipating the Fed to lower rates sometime in 2023. That's a possibility. That's my interpretation of why maybe the builders are starting to move um, this summer. So let's come back to what an, a Eureka thrust is. A Eureka thrust is really, really it's just a positive breath thrust. And I use the New York Stock Exchange and I get my data from Wall Street journal.com and just go to the market diary page and it will show you the advancing issues, declining issues, advancing or up volume and the declining volume um, every day. So the Eureka thrust is something that um, I was told about about eight or nine years ago at a Can Slim master's workshop. And um, it's a fairly rare thing, but I I, I took it a note of it, and um, when it does happen, it's noteworthy. So it's simply taking some ratios. It takes the advancing issues, divides them by the declining issues, and if it's greater than 2.98, that checks the box. If you look at advancing volume di divided by declining volume, if that's greater than 5.4, that checks the box. And then you take the two ratios and put them, one in the numerator, the other in the denominator. And if that ratio is less than 0.63, that checks the box. A Eureka thrust must check all three boxes. Um, don't ask me to confirm why these are the right numbers. This individual gave them to me and I took him at his word because he had done some back testing to, um, to back up why this was a powerful breath thrust. So, August 10th, a couple days ago, we had one of these thrusts. So here's where the numbers were. We had 2751 advancers, 512 decliners, 4,135 advancing volume. Um, and these are in the millions. Um, and 341 um, was the declining volume. So if you run the math, you'll see that all three boxes on the Eureka thrust are um, checked off. So it's a rare signal and why it's important is because when you get a Eureka thrust within two weeks of a follow through day, it really increases the odds of a tradable rally. Um, so that's important. So um, that in combination with those, those subsequent follow through days, it's positive. Um, I will note there's something called a Phoenix thrust, which is a negative breath thrust, which you would see as the market's been running and a bull market is getting long in the tooth, but we'll save that definition for another day. So let's move on to the power trend. Now the power trend is an IBD device. I think Mike Webster is the one who uh, quantified it um, through a lot of study. Um, you know, can slim investing is, um, you know, most successful when we're in an uptrend and an uptrend being on a daily time frame and a weekly time frame. 
And when you get the NASDAQ above the 21 day exponential moving average, that starts to stack the odds in your favor uh, for can slim investing. And so when you start to trend above the 21 day, that's especially po positive. And um, we label that a power trend. Now there are very specific rules to um, create a power trend. So all four of these conditions uh, must turn on to have a power trend. The 21 day exponential moving average has to be above the 50 day simple moving average for at least five days. The index must close up or flat on the day. And the 50 day simple moving average needs to be at an uptrend for at least one day. And the index low has to be above the 21 day exponential moving average for at least 10 consecutive days. And that can be challenging, but we need all four conditions to get a power trend. So let's look at an example. So here's an example, and you might wanna take a screenshot of this because I put all the rules here in black. And I've also put in magenta, what are the rules that turn the power trend off? Now the power trend turns off when the 21 day crosses below the 50 day moving average and the index closes down on the day. There is a circuit breaker rule that turns the power trend off. And that is when you get a very sharp break in the market, the market falls 10% off its high um, in a day. Um, and that would immediately um, reduce your exposure to zero and back to 100% cash. So here's a power trend from April 2009 to February 2010. Here's when the power trend turned on. The magenta line is the 21 day moving average. The red is the 50. You'll notice that the stocks are the index is trending nicely. And even though the price action goes below the 50 day moving average right here, the power trend is still in place because the magenta line, the 21 day is still above the red 50 day moving average. So that keeps you in the power trend mode. The index continues to work its way higher. It does come back down below the 50 day again, but the 21 day moving average stays above the 50. And it isn't until we get over into February, what you'll notice right here is where the 21 day moving average crosses below the 50 and the index is down for the particular day. In this case, it was a 34% gain over 210 trading days. Here's one more example for your files. This is the 1982, September 82 to July of 83 power trend. Um, I'll let you dig into this, but you can see the power trend turned on here. The follow through day was in August of 1982. Major bull market ensued. In this case, 61% gain in 210 trading days. And I pointed out where the power trend finally turned off. So I want to talk about um, flexibility. We need to be very, very flexible right now. And one of the reasons is market seasonality. Um, this is a chart showing um, returns in orange over the past 10 years by month. Blue is the past 20 years by month and since 1950 in black. You'll notice that August and September are generally negative months on the market. So we're entering... Um, you know, really a weak seasonal period for the market. Um, so we want to keep that in the back of our minds um, as we're rallying right now, that we may see some weakness forward. So the last video I had showed, you know, the rally had started, we had gotten above the 50 day and we said, geez, we've got this zone where we could rally all the way up to the 200 day moving average. And we didn't know, you know, there's some scenarios we needed to be aware of and we need to be flexible. The first scenario was we run into the 200 day and perhaps go sideways and then start to pull back. And that might correspond to in September. And we would have what we call a retest, a retest of the lows from June. And then maybe those lows hold and the market moves its way higher. Second scenario was maybe we only get a brief pause at the 200 day moving average and we just continue to work our way higher um, towards the old highs. That's a possibility. And the third was we run our head into resistance at the 200 day moving average and maybe work our way lower in the spirit of potentially doing a retest of the lows, but possibly that retest doesn't hold and the market breaks open and we get our 
third leg lower to the bear market. That's another possibility. So it's really an important time to be flexible. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the psychology of a retest of the lows. And I wanna actually talk about it from a professional's perspective. You know, the, the NASDAQ was off 35% to its low in June. Um, even some of the professionals have been really crushed holding uh, growth names too far on the way down. And they're stuck with losses or they took big losses on the way down. So as the market comes down and makes it a low, um, you know, at those new lows, even the pros have damaged mental capital. Uh, if you think about it, they are underperforming at their job, which is money management. Um, these people that were trading for this firm, um, they don't look good in the boss's eye right now. They're holding losses or they've taken big losses. So they they're have some damaged mental capital. Now, when you get this push off the lows with a, a rally, um, you know, it's very easy to perceive that rally as only a, quote, bear market rally. Um, the pros that are kind of damaged might be very, very scared to buy. Some of them may be waiting back into the market. Other ones are going to be afraid to buy. Um, simply speaking, their psychology is they don't want to make another mistake and potentially lose their job. If they were to plow back into the market and then we made another leg lower, they may lose their job. So they want to be sure before they start deploying big capital back to the markets. So if you're a pro that has not played this rally and you've, you're underinvested, it's possible that when we start to get this pullback um, and possibly get a retest um, of the lows, um, this is really where the rubber meets the road. You know, there are gonna be pros that really missed and did not play this initial rally. The real question is, are they going to buy this pullback because they feel now it's a safe place to buy, which will create more uh, demand, and this rally will turn and continue higher for another leg, or do all the pros bail out and we start another leg down with heavy selling? So there's a certain psychology to the retest. We'll have to see how it plays out. So next steps, what should we be doing now? Um, you should be uh, deploying capital, you should have some exposure to the market, <clears throat> probably anywhere from 20 to 50%, um, depending on your risk tolerance. If you are, have been flat-footed or been scared to buy into this rally, that's okay. You just need to be very patient and disciplined and don't chase extended stocks. The real key is right now you want to have some cushion in the stocks that you purchase, because we, we really need to prepare ourselves for probably a three to 5% pullback, which would be normal given the rally. <coughs> now, if you have no cushion, um, when we get this pullback, you're probably gonna get knocked out of your positions because you just won't be able to withstand um, your average cost. So if you only have small gains, you might wanna consider banking some of those smaller profits, but maybe holding the ones that you have some good cushion. Now, if the low is in and a new bar bull market has begun since mid-June, there are going to be plenty of opportunities to create low-risk entry points in the future. So don't feel like you missed anything. There are going to be plenty of opportunities. And the reason I say that is, you know, many, there's very few growth stocks that are, you know, breaking out of proper basis. There are a few leaders, as we mentioned, but many of them have been so damaged, they need more time to build their bases and start to build accumulation into those bases. You know, when stocks are off 50 to 75%, you know, a retest in the NAS, that might be just the opportunity for these growth stocks to take another four to six to eight weeks to properly build out um, their bases. So that's really important to um, be aware of as we try to look at growth stock action in the context of a potential retest. So I wanted to mention there's going to be an IBD national meetup event next Saturday, August 20th. Starts at 1130 Eastern, 830 on the West Coast. Um, will be led by Amy Smith, Arusha Pires, Jonathan Howard. Um, they've asked four of us meetup leaders to give a 20 minute talk. Um, I believe I'm going to be in the fourth position. Um, so uh, the topic that I'll be, be speaking on is historical bear markets and how growth stocks actually looked and how they actually set up during some previous bear markets to give us some clues of what to look for 
today. So I think it might be of interest to, to all of you. So I you know, encourage you to join this. It's a free national meetup. I'm sure if you go to uh, go to investors.com, there'll be information there. I put on my Twitter feed the link so you can sign up because you do need to sign up. So I encourage you to do that. I hope to see you all next Saturday. So that's all the time I have for now. Thanks again for joining me. I would welcome any comments you have on this video and I hope to see you next Saturday.